All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Alienware uh, M17 R3. All right, so this computer is running really hot, the customer said. It looks like they tried to take some out, like these screws are already loose. Um, but we're going to be using a JS1 screwdriver to get the screws out. Okay, you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is I put them flat side down on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Okay, so we got these. Oops, I have some screws on my thing I need to clean up. Give me a second, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue removing the screws. Sorry about that. Okay, again, it's important to keep them in order because if they get mixed up, sometimes some are shorter, longer, and it doesn't seem like it, and then you can end up damaging the computer. It looks like these screws actually stay in place. These might possibly also do the same, but maybe the customer did something and messed it up. All right. So they're missing a screw down here as well. I don't know if this screw is... Okay, that seems stuck. Okay, so these corner screws and the, these two seem to see, uh, be stuck. Oh, they came out. Um, maybe it holds in place because they have a smooth edge and then the thread's there. So that might be how it holds in place. And maybe this one is... I don't know how it's caught. Usually it's like a washer or something that holds it. So it's kind of weird that... It would be like that. All right. So as you can see, I just got my fingernail in here and pulled up and now it's out. And oh, I was right. So there's a washer here and these two actually don't have washers. So they're just be holding, being held in place with friction, it seems. Okay. So we'll set that aside. The customer said that they tried cleaning out the fan, but it's still dusty. Um, yeah. So they didn't clean it out too well. My guess is I have to take the fans out completely and then... Um, basically clear out any dust that's stuck in the heat sink. All right, we're gonna take the battery out. Uh, battery model number is right here. So if you can see it, 69KF2. All right, there we go. And let's go ahead and get this out. All right, so we're gonna get all these screws out. Two. Um, actually, I should get a thumbnail here. I didn't get a thumbnail with it open, so get a thumbnail there. Okay, let's continue removing all these battery screws. There we go, got all of that out. All right, so this connector looks like a um, push-in one, um, but there's all this stuff in the way like this. I don't know why there's this plastic here. Um, we're gonna try and get in and use the edge. I'm gonna try and pull it. It doesn't look like I get much grip here. So I think I'm gonna have to use a small tool in that spot to help pull it. Um, usually a small flathead screwdriver that's flat and fits in that gap will work well. So we'll get that in and we'll push and you can see I wiggled this as I pushed and it came out. So there we go. Alright, let's see. I don't know why these cables seem to be stuck to it from the bottom, but okay, there we go. I had to hold that down. Um, oops, sorry. I basically, let me zoom out here. Basically held this cable down and then lift, rolled it up like that. And there we go, there's the battery. Their battery actually looks bad. It's really inflated. That needs to be replaced. Um, 69KF2 again, there you go. Pretty easy to remove that. So the customer will probably end up doing that themselves. Um, we are gonna have to pull the whole motherboard out, which requires removing this back piece. Okay, excuse me. So there's, oops, I need to put the screwdriver back. So there's one screw here. Okay, one screw here. Again, keep all the screws in order because there are a lot of them. They are different size, shape, and lengths, and you don't want to break something by not putting the right screw in the right place. All right, we got another screw back here next to the HDMI port. We're going to remove that as well. Okay, got that one. And then we got one more over here. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, next thing we gotta do is remove this piece. So you gotta grab it and kind of pull it. Okay, make sure you're just grabbing on the this piece itself, not on the 
part inside here. Okay, you're just grabbing out here. Okay, pull that. Go on this side, pull that. You wanna be careful, it looks like this piece is coming out with it. So we might have to disconnect this cable. This is like a lighting cable most likely. Okay, we'll get that up and then be very gentle with this. You don't wanna just yank the wire because you don't wanna rip it out. So usually what I do is I hold the wire and then you can kind of push on the connector itself like that sideways. Okay, and you can see it came out. There we go. Okay, there we go. Then we'll get this, lift that up. There's adhesive holding it. So peel that up, hold down the other stuff. Okay, and then let's see if we can pull this. There we go. So the way I did that was I wrapped my hands around and I used my two fingers on each side to do that. Okay, and there you go. This piece did come out with that. And it looks like this piece it plugs into. And I'm assuming, yeah, that's for the light, the lights around there. Okay. All right, so we got that out. One other thing I didn't mention after disconnecting the battery, let's open up the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. You need this to drain any residual power. Um, if you don't do this, there's a very good chance you can fry the backlight circuit and possibly even the whole motherboard. So be very careful with that and take the time, 15 seconds, it's not long. If you want, you can hold it for longer, 20, 30 seconds, but 15 seconds should be enough. Okay, we don't need to take out the screen on here, I don't think, but if you wanted to, the hinges are on this side, okay? And then you'd have to undo those screws and it's a little bit tricky, but there's screws here and here, okay? But again, um, I don't think I'm gonna be removing that since the main thing we need to do is take the fans out and redo the thermal paste. So we are gonna have to take the motherboard out, um, so that's why I had to drain the power. Um, I think I zoomed out too far, so it's not as clear, but there we go. Okay, give me a second. I need to check some messages on my phone and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. We're gonna kind of brush the fans a little bit just to loosen up some of this dust. It seems to be stuck pretty strong there. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, we're gonna have to take the fans out completely as well and then clean the heat sink. If the dust is stuck this strong to the fan propellers, then definitely the uh, heat sink is gonna be caked on with gunk. And that's what causes this kind of thing to overheat. Um, they said it would randomly lock up and then it would, um, the sound would get stuck and it would make like a loud noise. Usually that's when it gets stuck on some sound bite or something and it re replays that sound like over and over. So if it's like, Dit, then it goes like, Dit, like nonstop something like that. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and remove all these components. Um, I guess let me zoom in a bit for you guys. Okay, so we're going to flip this latch up. There's adhesive holding this down. So you want to peel that up first, just like that. Then we're going to flip this latch and then we're going to grab this and wiggle to pull that back. Okay, then we got this cable here as well. Peel that adhesive up and then it's another one of those push-in connectors. Again, sometimes when these are hard to get out, it helps to kind of just pull on this a little bit and then push it to the side. And then same thing with the other side. And there you go, comes out. So that's actually a new trick that I found, I discovered just like doing this computer. So usually I would use like some tool to help try and like pull these kinds of things out, but this seems to work better. So let's try it again with this one. Trying to pull this cable out and I'm gonna put a little pressure and then push on the side. And yeah, that works really well. Okay, so pull on this again, push that. Look at that, it comes out so easily. All right, we're gonna get this out. Be careful not to, you don't wanna just fold this cable back, so I try and keep it as flat as possible. And you can put your thumb here to keep it so when you pull it, it doesn't just go flying and yanking it out. All right, so we got that. Okay, there's a lot of screws in here. The problem is it's gonna to be tough to kind of move the computer around, so hopefully I get everything in view for you guys. We got a fan cable, there's this wing connector. I just grab the wings and wiggle it like that to pop it out, there we go. Okay, then we got this connector here. This is like, um, it just gets held down by these screws. So we're gonna have to remove this as well. Okay, again, keep all this stuff in order because there's a lot of it, all right? There's a lot of things you gotta keep track of here. All right, we'll get those two screws out and we got this here. You can see how it connects all these little pins there, okay? That's how it connects to the motherboard. Okay, all right, so there we go. Okay, I don't think we need to take out all this stuff, but this board is removable as well, okay? Um, there's the speaker connected here, and then a wire runs along the bottom to the other speaker over here, okay? You can see that. 
All right, you got this little board. Um, again, I don't need to remove it, but uh, I mean, I'll just do it just to show you guys since we're gonna be taking the whole thing apart. So pop that connector out. All right, and then we're gonna get all of this out. Hopefully their video card's not like dying or failing because sometimes um, taking it apart, doing the thermal paste and stuff is enough to get it to stop working completely. Usually what happens is um, after it gets really hot and cold, the solder cracks and then it's just barely making contact to work. And when you take the heat sink and stuff off because it pulls on it or twists it, it sometimes makes that small crack misaligned and it's enough to make it not turn on anymore. So we'll see, hopefully not. But here's the little board here. It's a little dusty, so let's clean that off. Um, if you're wondering, I actually just use a toothbrush, but make sure you have yourself grounded or touching something that will prevent static from building up. Um, otherwise you can fry the components, okay? All right, so this board here, okay? Um, I'm gonna actually put this back. They have a SSD slot here. It only supports PCIe, so PCIe NVMe, keep that in mind, all right? And then there's another slot here that has the actual SSD. Sorry, I know it's off view. All right, you got the keyboard connector here for, it looks like the entire, is this for the entire keyboard? Um, oh, okay, wait, this is like keyboard backlight connector somewhat. And then the keyboard is here, plugs into this board as well. And then this board, this thing controls all like the input stuff that's going into it and it sends it back to the motherboard here, okay? All right. I try and give all my knowledge in every single video I make. So usually uh, most questions I wouldn't know the answer to unless it's answered in the video already. So hopefully, I don't know. Some people ask me where the BIOS chip or something is and I'm like, I don't know. I don't do that kind of thing. But um, yeah, all right. And it's looking like there's no removable RAM here, which is gonna be terrible. This, this thing here looks like RAM. So it looks like that's soldered to the motherboard. Um, if it's all soldered to the motherboard, that's a stupid design. Anyways, we're gonna get this connector out as well. Just wiggle that, there we go. Okay, um, they left a little USB thing here, so I'm gonna take that out real quick. And just pop that out. It looks like this is also its own separate board. Yeah, it looks like it's its own separate board. Um, but this board, it looks like screws go in from the other side. And usually this kind of thing has pins that kind of go into the board. And um, there might be pins coming out from this side going down into this board and the screws hold the two pieces together. Okay, we're gonna remove this cable here, which I believe is for the power button. All right, it does say J power PWR there. And this says PW. Um, we're gonna flip that latch. Then we're gonna pull this cable out. You got the wireless card here. It is part of this board. Um, luckily, this board is replaceable. So if the wireless card dies, you can replace this whole board. But as for replacing the wireless chip itself, um, yeah, I don't know, good luck. I'm, it's, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but if you're watching this video and you ask if it's possible, trust me, you're not gonna be able to do it. So we'll remove that. You got the two um, antennas here. So the way you remove the antennas, Usually I go from the tail and just pull straight up, just like that, this one, and go straight up. All right, there we go. We're gonna zoom back out here. Oh, are there three SSD slots? So there's a third SSD slot, but this is for a shorter one. Um, I don't remember what the name or numbers on the SSDs are, but this one is like half the size of the original. I think this is like an 80 millimeter, so this is probably like a 40 millimeter, something like that. All right, we're gonna take the SSD out, so we'll undo this one screw here. Okay, take that out and then we'll lift this up, the copper thing with it, and then we can wiggle and pull that back. And here's the SSD. This is an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. I'm not gonna take the copper thing off because they use a little thermal pad that kind of sticks to it, but you gotta peel that off and then you can put a new SSD in its place. We'll set that aside. All right, here you have the touchpad trackpad cable going into the motherboard here. Flip that latch up, get that, pull that out. All right. Um, the keyboard connector, we'll flip that up and pull that out. Okay, there we go. All right, and what else do we got? Let's, I think we're gonna have to just remove all the screws now. I think we got pretty much everything disconnected that we need to disconnect. Um, this wireless antenna, we do need to flip it over here. So we'll grab that and we'll flip it over there. All right, 
Okay, let's zoom out more, and then we're gonna take all the screws out from the motherboard here. Okay, so we'll take this out. Okay, and we'll take this one out. Okay, all right, there's a fan screw here. We'll remove that one as well. Again, these are all different size, shape, and length. The fan screw is much bigger, so don't mix it up. Then we have another screw in the motherboard here, also a small, short one. Okay, then we got another screw up here. And another two screws over here. Okay, most of these screws have like little arrows pointing at them, so you know where the screws came from. But again, it's always a good idea to put the screws in order so you know where they came from and where to put them back. Okay, are there any hidden screws here? I might have to move the computer around so I can see. There's a screw here holding this bracket down here. I'm not sure if you have to remove that to remove the motherboard um, because it's likely just holding this bracket for the, uh, what do you call, for the DC jack charge port in place, but uh, we'll remove it anyways. Okay, if any screws are missing here that you don't see on yours, um, it could be because the customer worked on this and maybe they left some or they lost some screws, so keep that in mind. All right, we got three screws down here that we need to remove. Okay, that's holding that plastic bracket in place. These screws are all silver, so if you somehow mix it up, then hopefully that'll help. Okay. There we go, so we got those three out, and there we go, and I think we should be able to lift it up now, I'm not 100% sure. It feels like it's stuck on something, so I don't know if something was spilled in here that's sticky, but uh, it shouldn't be stuck like that. This feels like it's caught, oh, there's one more screw there, sorry about that. Almost missed it and almost just ripped the board out. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Okay, and let's see. Okay, now it comes up. We're gonna carefully flip this up. You wanna be careful. If you're working with this, make sure again that you touch something that's grounded so you don't put static electricity into the computer. All right, you can see I kind of helped pull the heat sink up, but you wanna be careful because the heat sink is fragile. There's a lot of dust in here we're gonna have to take out. And here you can see the back of the motherboard. Okay. And also, if you put this down, make sure to put it on something that's not going to like conduct electricity and short a bunch of stuff out. Okay, I'm going to clean this up. I'm basically just going to get a toothbrush, scrub it, and then I have an electric air blower I use to blow the dust away. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So here you can see this is all cleaned up. All right, we don't got all that dust on there anymore. The fans here are cleaned up quite a bit more, and I cleaned both sides. Um, again, we are going to be removing the fans. The fans are held in place with some tiny screws on the bottom here. So let's actually go ahead and remove those first. So you can kind of see, I blew the dust out. Um, we'll see, there's probably still a lot of dust still stuck in there. So you got these tiny screws here, okay? Usually there's four on each fan. And that looks to be the case with these. So we'll get all these out. One of the fans, when I was blowing the dust out, it felt like it's uneven and wobbly, so it might be, actually you can see it visually here when I spin it, this one's like not even, so I don't know what's going on there. Maybe they're both like that. They're both kind of like that, I don't know. All right, so we're gonna remove all four screws here, so we'll get that one out. And the last one here. Okay, now that we got those four screws out, let's see, the fan's probably gonna plop out. Oh, okay, it's still holding on a little bit. And that's probably because the adhesive here. So we're gonna have to somehow peel the adhesive up. We gotta be careful. Okay, carefully peel this. I'm holding the heat sink down and we're gonna slowly peel that. And look at all that. You see that? Oh, sorry, can't even see that. You see that? Look at that, that's after I used a powerful air blower and blew the thing out. I did have to hold it down by hand to keep it from spinning because if the dust like gets into there, it can damage the fan propeller blades. Um, these propeller blades seem to be mounted securely on here. So if we did need to lubricate it, we'd have to kind of push from the back end. Oops, sorry, we'd have to push from this end. And usually I would push on the 
inner ring part there because if you push out here you can break the thing um, but i'm going to leave it alone because the bearings seem okay you can see it spins and then it it kind of wobbles back and forth that's how you know that the um thing is good okay so i'm gonna have to take this out and then blow the dust out again uh once now that i have it open i'm gonna kind of use the brush clean it up a bit more and then do that but let's go ahead and do that for the other side as well okay we've got the other four screws here we're gonna remove those as well okay so we'll get these out those out we'll flip this back over and this one's already coming out on its own wow look at that you see that oh my goodness that was clogging the fan and that's why it was overheating um usually it's okay to just clean the dust and you'll be done but because they left it so long i think it was probably getting so hot i'm gonna have to redo the thermal paste so i'm gonna clean this up uh outside both sides um we'll brush the dust out blow the dust away and then we'll continue all right i'll see you guys in a bit all right i'm back let's zoom out here okay so here you can see let's, let's see so you can see cleaned up the fans i'm going to zoom in a bit because we don't need to zoom out and zoom out that far but here you can see inside the fans all clean okay so now we're going to put it back together and then remove the heat sink okay so there's that okay so we're going to flip the fans back over again i think the customer peeled this tape off because it's kind of coming up kind of weird all right we're going to keep it disconnected the fans because we are going to have to um oh this dust doesn't even want to come off um but because we're going to have to take off the heat sink so let's flip this back over here okay and then let's get these screws back in four on each side um usually what i do is i loosely put the screws back in first to get everything in place okay line it up loosely fit that okay loosely fit that loosely fit that go now we tighten it all okay we're gonna do the same thing with this side loosely fit that loosely fit this loosely fit that and the last one here All right, and we'll tighten these all into place. Okay, so we got those four. We're gonna now remove the heat sink, okay? We're gonna switch over to a JS1 again, and we're gonna undo all these screws here. Okay, maybe let me zoom in so you can see this better. Oh, there's a lot of screws. Okay, so hopefully you can see all of them. I guess I need to zoom out a tiny bit more. And I think you can see all of them from there. Okay, we're gonna remove this one first. Doesn't really matter the order when we're removing them. Oh, it looks like these screws don't hold themselves in place with springs. So make sure that you set them aside and keep them in order so you don't mix them up, okay? So we got these four that come out as a, in a square. here these are numbered so when you put it back you want to screw them down in the specific order 
Um, that helps it so it more evenly pushes around the thermal paste, okay? Um, also, the board that I was talking about earlier, it is removable, but I'm going to leave that there. Maybe purely for interest, I might, or curiosity, I might pull it out just to show you guys. Okay, so we got those four out, and then you got two more here. And just a word of warning, don't just yank the heat sink off, because that can damage the computer so I'll show you how to do it more safely okay usually if the paste is kind of going bad um, then it's going to be very difficult to get this thing off so let's see here usually what I do you grab the motherboard and you kind of like twist it like you pull this up and down rotating it okay and that loosens it and here you can see it's already like letting go and then if it's good enough, you should be able to easily lift it out. It looks like something's stuck here. Is there another screw here or something? I don't know. There's something here. I guess we'll pull this tab. They have a tab here. So let's pull that up. Hmm. Is there a hidden screw under there? What is this? I've never seen a thing like this before. Hmm. I don't know what's going on there, but it feels stuck just right there. If I wiggle this. Am I missing something? Is there a screw hidden from the other side? No. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you got those two. And I think that should be it. So what is holding this? You can see when I let it go, it's flopping up, but it feels like something over here is caught. Is there a screw I miss? Is it tape? It might be this. There's some double stick adhesive stuff looking thing here, but it's kind of stuck. Or is it really this? Maybe it really is this piece. How do I get this off? Wow. So, oh, there we go. Okay, so we had to pull that. And wow, that thing like melted on there. See that? They have like some label here that melted on. So that's crazy. Hopefully the thing is okay after pulling that thing off. I don't know if Alienware put some security there to prevent people from doing that. Here you can see the thermal pads and the thermal paste, okay? If you're gonna ask me how thick the pads are, I have no idea. I'm gonna say the blue ones look to be about a millimeter thick. Um, the gray ones look to be a tad bit thicker maybe, but still around a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half or two. Um, but yeah, all right. So there's that. I'm gonna adjust them back into place. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just to my naked eye, the blue ones appear to be close to a millimeter or so, but I don't know. I'm just guessing, okay? Don't, 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 um, yeah, don't use that as a measurement. You might want to measure it yourself. Usually I don't replace the pads. I just replace the paste, so I don't really have to worry about the thickness of that. We are going to clean this up, and then we're going to have to reapply new thermal paste. There are these little components that stick up here, so you want to be careful with that, um, usually I use a little plastic tool to scrape around to get all the paste out, and same thing with this. So let me actually move this aside for now, and I'll show you on here real quick. So here we have the heat sink. All right, and I'm gonna use this plastic tool. You wanna be careful not to bend the heat sink. Okay, so I'm just gonna scrape this. Okay, usually when you can see it's kind of solid like that, that's how you know it's kind of like going bad because it's not a paste, it's more dried. Okay, just like that. And scrape that up. Okay, scrape that up. There we go. Okay, we got all that paste off. We're going to now clean it out. Okay, same thing with this side. Oh, I should have zoomed in more for you guys. Uh, we are going to clean it up more with um, thermal paste after. I'm mean, not with thermal paste, <laughs> with isopropyl alcohol. Here you can see this one's like super crumbly. Okay, so this one's even worse. Um, and this is the CPU thermal paste. So it looks like the CPU must have been running really hot for it to be so crumbly like this. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to dump this off into a trash can. I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. You can see the cleaned off stuff. 
Um, now I'm going to clean it with uh, the isopropyl alcohol. I just use 91% and some paper towels. So give me a second, I'm getting some messages. All right, I'm back. So I've got some paper towel. I'm just gonna pour some onto it, okay? All right, and then we're just gonna rub the thermal paste away, the, weight, the old thermal paste, okay? We're gonna do this because this old stuff doesn't conduct heat that well anymore. All right, you can see we got most of that. We're gonna do this side as well. Usually it doesn't come out of the plastics and it, a lot of times we'll just rub into it and get stained more, but there we go. Okay, flip it over more to a clean side and clean it a little bit more. Same thing with this one. All right, and there we go. So we'll dry that up and we'll set this aside. We're gonna work on the motherboard now, okay? So here's the motherboard, same idea. We just gotta get this stuff off. It's a little bit trickier because you have all these components. So after you scrape it out, I usually will flip it upside down into a trash can to try and avoid the stuff from falling onto it. Um, you can probably also use like a little vacuum or something, but. Yeah, all right, be very careful scraping this stuff off in case there are components that stick up. You don't want to accidentally scrape those components off, okay? Just like this. Scrape this off. Okay, that's pretty good. Now let's work on this, the GPU. Scrape off the edges in here. go okay so i'm gonna flip this over in the trash can i'll be back see you guys in a bit okay so as you can see a lot of the stuff gets stuck in here so i'm gonna use a toothbrush and scrub that off all right i'll be back again all right so i'm back you can see how much cleaner it looks now okay i'm gonna put some isopropyl alcohol on here again and then we're gonna clean up the last two pieces, okay? So we got that, and clean this off. All right, and then we're gonna clean this off. Okay, there we go. And we'll clean this off. Good. All right, maybe a little bit more here. And then use the dry side to clean it. All right, there we go. Now we gotta reapply new thermal paste here. Um, you actually don't need a crazy amount. Um, this one uses maybe a little bit about the size of a grain of rice, maybe a little more. And then this one needs like a bigger, like close to the size of a pea. Give me a second, I gotta answer some messages. Right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and get this all pasted up. So again, we're gonna put probably about the size of a grain of rice here, a little bit bigger. So go along the side here. 
maybe like a long long grain that's actually quite a lot because it squeezes out really thin so you don't need a huge amount okay so there we go get that all in there okay all right so there we go we got that all filled up and we're going to go ahead and put this side and again, once you put this down, it's going to smush it completely flat. So um, it actually uses less than you think you need. Okay. So this again, we'll put like about the size of a pea here. All right. More. This paste I have is super thick. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'll make it the size of a P and then spread it a little bit side to side because it is a little bit wider than it is square. Okay, so we're just going to spread it a little bit to the sides a little. Okay, don't need to do too much. And then when we put the thing on top, it's going to spread it super thin and we'll get it to cover the entire die. Okay, so there we go. There's the thermal paste on the CPU and the GPU. Now we got to put the heat sink back on, put the screws in, and we should be good to go to reassemble. Okay, so let's go ahead here. Make sure you can see everything. All right. And we'll grab the heat sink back over here. And this had this little pull tab here that was stuck so strong there. We're going to go ahead and line this up. Make sure these cables for the fans do go underneath the motherboard. Um, you can probably start with them on top and then move them later. But uh, just be careful with that and keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to line up the two bottom screws for the 9 and 10 first. Oops, let me zoom out here. Can't. Oh, I thought I had the whole motherboard in view, but I guess not. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it'll go with the two 9 and 10 screws down there. Line that up. And then we'll slowly drop it down. Okay. So there we go. And then we will line this, everything else up afterwards. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I know these are 9 and 10, but I'm going to use these as guides. So I'm going to loosely fit these screws. So just like that. Okay. I just twisted it like a couple times twist it backwards to hear it click and then pull it in all right it looks like this fan cable got trapped under there so make sure to pull that out okay if you want you can actually reconnect them now um, but be careful oops we have this moving around okay so now that we got that okay it looks like it'll be more useful to kind of get all the screws in first so we'll loosely fit that screw loosely fit this screw Loosely fit this screw. Again, I'm just twisting them all twice. I'm twisting it to hear a click and then twisting it twice. Okay. This one. Alright. This one. And the last one here. Okay, there we go. So we got all of that connected. We're going to flip this over. Again, I didn't tighten any of them down yet. Let's go ahead and get the fan connections back in. They mark these so you know which side's up with a little white dot. But if you replace the fan, make sure you don't put it upside down. You want the pins actually showing face up. And then I pinch the connectors together. Okay. Just like that. And this one. Pinch that just like that. Okay. And be careful when you put this back that this fan, because um, it does go over like these screw mounts, that it's not going to clamp on top of them or anything. But it does go up. Make sure the screws don't go into them. Okay. We'll flip this back over. 
Okay, and then we got to look for the numbers here. So two, three, so here's one. Okay, so number one is right here. So usually what I do is I start with one and go one, two, three, number two, one, two, three, number three, one, two, three, number three, one, two, three and number four, one, two, three. Then we go back over, one, two, three, tighten it all the way. Good, number two, tighten this all the way. Number three, tighten that all the way. And number four, tighten that all the way, okay? That ensures that it's kind of slowly kind of pushing all around, okay? Then we got these, um, four, then we got, what is this? I think this is five, where's the number? Yeah, so five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna go with five. Again, uh, I'm gonna twist it all the way till you hear the click. One, two, three, then number six, all the way, click. One, two, three, number seven down here. Click one, two, three, number eight. Click one, two, three. All right, and again, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, looks like it's tightened already. Three, and one, two, three. Now make sure everything is tightened down. Okay, that was already good. Um, and these things are somewhat spring loaded, so it will be constantly putting pressure, pulling it down until it's completely flat. So you don't need to worry too much. All right, and then we got the last ones, nine and 10. One, two, three, twist it backwards, one, two, three. And then again, one, two, three, I guess tighten it all the way and tighten this all the way. All right, so there we go. We got the heat sink remounted. Give me a second, I'm gonna respond to some more messages. All right, I'm back. Let's get this thing back together. So we got the whole assembly. Oh, one thing. Let me show you this piece real quick, okay? Since I didn't take it out, there's four screws. We're gonna remove all four. Again, keep them in order. Looks like there's two pins sticking here and here, so maybe there's just four pins, but I'll be surprised. Usually it has a lot more than that, so. Okay, so we got those four screws out. Let's go ahead and see if we can pop this up. Oh, okay, so that's how it works. You can see all the connections here. This has a little piece that's removable and the four pins kind of just help align it. So make sure you don't lose this piece or you won't have function of all those other pieces attached, wireless and whatnot. Okay, so this, you gotta be careful, but it should lift straight up, there we go. And you can see how it connects here with the pins down to there and then the pins go up into this piece, all right? So that's how that works and the pins go through these holes to help align it. Okay, so that's pretty much it hopefully this video helped you guys out we are going to reassemble it um, but if the video did help please make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well leave a comment if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel it really does help a lot and allows me to continue making these videos for a living and i really appreciate it if you can't do that um, it's also very helpful if you can uh, watch a few of my other videos and then like those and comment on those as well because YouTube likes to see that people are engaging with the videos. Um, and also, if you don't like this kind of content, you probably won't be here by now, but if you like my review content, I do reviews as well. I'm actually splitting the channel off um, and making another channel specifically for those. For the time being, I'm actually uploading them to this channel and the other one, but eventually I'm gonna be just uploading it to that channel. So keep that in mind if you like those videos um, to subscribe over there as well, okay? So we're gonna move this up out of the way and we're gonna slowly get this in place. Oh, also if you're wondering, there's one more screw and then you can pop out the DC jack charge port. So yeah, charge port's really easy to replace on this model. Okay, we're gonna slowly get this into place. All right. It's going to be a little tricky. You got to get the power button cable up through here. Very important. Otherwise, you're not going to have power to your computer. So try and get that through. I don't know. It's a little tricky. I don't, we'll probably have to drop it in place and then figure that out afterwards because it's not wanting to go in easily. So we're going to slowly work this into place. Okay. Get that in. Get this in. All right. Get that down. Okay, and this piece seems like it's having some issues. Let me take a look here. What is it getting caught on? I don't know if it's just caught on the cables or what's going on. Maybe the cable has to go through here. Oh yeah, so the cables have to go through this little slot first. 
Okay, again, make sure you didn't smash any cables underneath. We have this for these two, and then this big cable down here. You got the cable here for the keyboard, this cable for the touchpad, and the two speakers as well. It looks like I'm missing a cable there. Was there a thing there? T-O-B-H. What was that? That wasn't for the... Was that for this? No. So this went down all the way and then plugged in over here for the light. So, I don't know. There's a little TP thing here. I don't remember remo removing a connector here, so I think that's fine. I'll probably rewatch my video after this. If I did miss something, I'll come back to it. Um, we're going to pull this up slightly and then try and pull the power button cable through. Um, you want to be careful because this board is a little thin. So, there we go. Okay. Get that all lined back up. Get this lined back up. And push that down. Okay, this has little raised mounts that hold it into place, so make sure you get that lined up in the right spot. And I think everything else is lined up right. So let's go ahead now and start putting it all back together. So we have this cable. Flip that latch up and then carefully get that back in. Line it up. Okay, the wing should go past, so you should be able to see a little bit of the um, beige, I guess, whatever color that is, behind the wings. And then flip that latch down to lock it into place. All right, then we got this cable down here. Same idea for the keyboard. Flip that, make sure that latch is flipped up. Get that cable in, and yeah. All right, you wanna make sure this is latched in right because if the latch isn't engaged, it won't push the pins into here and it's not gonna work. I've had some people break the latch off and then they were saying like, how come my thing doesn't work? And that's why. So you wanna be very careful with those. Okay, we got this cable up here. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, we got this cable here. I guess zoom out more that we need to get back in this slot. So line it back up and then pinch both sides in. There we go. Okay, and then we got this. We gotta make sure to get both connectors in as well. I'll zoom in. Might make it difficult for me because the angle, but let's see, I might have to flip it upside down. Let's see. Will it be able to go in camera view if I flip it upside down? Probably not. So let's do it maybe sideways this way. Okay, I guess that works, yeah. All right, so we'll line this up. That connector lined up and push that in and pinch that into place okay there we go then we got this connector I'm gonna flip that latch up and then we'll get this lined up and into place as well okay pull that in and then latch that down. All right, then put the adhesive in. We're good. Stick that tape back down. Let's flip this back over and get the wireless antennas in. Okay, get the wireless antennas lined back up. And then we'll click these back into place. All right, that one and this one. Click that all in, perfect. Make sure that's going down there, out of the way. Uh, let's see, am I missing stuff? Hopefully not. Okay, so we got this up here, okay. Get that back in. Line those up. All right, and get those two screws back in. Make sure it's lined up right. Okay, I feel like this isn't lined up right. Is there, oh, okay, there's a little guide pin that helps it go in place the proper spot. Then we'll get that screw down. Perfect, perfect. All right, then we have the main SSD right here. So we're gonna get that back in. Okay, line that up and push this back into place. Perfect. Get this screw in. All right. 
right, then we got the one from the wireless antennas here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a trick to it. We just line it up and put the screw in. There we go. Where did this black plastic thing come from again? <laughs> uh, shoot. This was for the SSD somewhere? Here. Okay. All right, so we got that back in. Get the screw back in. Loosely fit it. Oops, not that one. Okay. Loosely fit all these screws and then get them in. Tighten this down. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. Oh, I think there was a screw hidden under here, so I'm gonna have to actually take um, these out. Right? Yeah, there was a screw hidden under there, so let me make sure to get that back out. Okay. Flip that latch up and pull this out. Okay, and yeah. Okay, so we had this one screw here. And then was this screw. Hmm. Why do I have a mini screw? Is this... That's not from here, is it? No. Why am I feeling like another screw somewhere is missing? I'm going to pull this one back out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so I accidentally covered up the screw holes. There's another one under here. Okay, now we'll plug this back in. By the way, this is the DC jack charge port connector, if you're wondering. Okay, what that big connection is. So, pull that back in. If that's not connected or broken, then you're not going to be able to power, uh, charge up your computer. All right. And we got this one we're going to put back in. Okay, pull that in all the way, click that down. Right, then we got this connector. We're going to pull that back in. Pull that into place. Good, and then latch this over. All right, there we go. And we got to get the rest of the screws in. So we had these two here. Okay. All right, we have one down over here. Yeah, I don't think I removed anything here. This type of connector is the type where you kind of get underneath and pop it up. Um, I don't know why what it's there for, but it's not being used. There's also a TP connector there, which I'm not sure what that's for either. Okay, I've got another connection or screw here. I feel like there should be a screw here for the... Oh, we can't even see. I wonder if there should be a screw here for this fan, but there wasn't one. This one had one, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it goes here. Was that here? No, it goes for the fan. Interesting. Are they missing screws? Hmm. Okay, no. This one, the small one, goes down here. Okay, right there. And then the other one is what I was putting the big screw in to check. All right, and that should be it for those. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's like there's a screw missing there, but Okay, let's go ahead and get this bottom piece back in. What did I do with the bottom cover? Oh, never mind. Okay, so we got this. We're going to line this back up. Okay, be very careful, gentle getting this back on. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit. You don't want to damage any of these cables. Okay, 
should go on. Oh, maybe they pulled this off and then when they put it back on it, ripped this up. Is that what happened? Is that why this is coming out? So just like this. Okay, I might need to use like a glue stick or something for this because it's coming back up. Um, give me a second. I'm going to get like a little glue stick and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Let's finish getting this thing back together. Got the glue stick. Okay. And I'm just going to put some glue on this thing and stick it back down. All right. The glue doesn't really need to be crazy strong. It's just so that this thing will stay down when I try and get it underneath. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to stay down. So I don't know. It got too curled. I guess I'll have to use this tool to help get it, keep it under. Keep it flat. There we go. Okay. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and get this clean off that excess glue because we don't need it there. And slowly pull it in. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Oops, I should have zoomed out while I was doing that for you guys. All right. So here we go. Now we just got to get the four screws back in that we're holding this piece. So there's one in this corner. Okay, one in this corner. I'm just loosely fitting it first, make sure, making sure everything's in place. Okay, and then we're going to tilt it up and get these other two back in. Make sure all the ports and everything are lined up because you don't want to screw it down and then end up breaking the ports. Okay, that screwing. Okay, then we got this connector we got put back. This is for the light again. Uh, if you're replacing it, again, make sure you don't accidentally plug it in upside down. All right, there we go. <clears throat> what else do we got? The, mm, battery I think that's it oh don't forget the power switch that would have been dumb I would have been like why isn't it turning on all right make sure that's up get that cable back in let's look over again make sure everything's connected speaker <laughs> don't forget that okay <clears throat> all right I think we got everything else reconnected so let's go ahead now and put back the battery and hopefully we should be good. Also, if you noticed, I don't think there was a CMOS or BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. And probably the reason for that is it's built into this battery. A lot of times these batteries um, do double up as the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. And usually when that's the case, after disconnecting the battery, when you turn the computer back on, it's going to take a while to start up. So keep that in mind. It might not start up right away. Okay. Get this all lined back up. Um, let's actually get the screws back in before we put that in. Um, and then also put this USB thing back for the customer. <clears throat> okay. All right. Then we had the three little screws down here. And the four bigger screws up at the top again hopefully you guys didn't mix things up all right and again hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did please make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well write a comment because youtube likes to see that and if you do that it's more likely to share my channel with others um, and if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living um, keep in mind, I am saving a lot of people a lot of money, but at the same time, I'm also costing not only myself, but a lot of other <laughs> repair companies money because they're not getting these repair jobs. Um, so it'd be very grateful. I'd be very grateful if you could at least pass a little bit of that on to me. I'll every so often get people that live in my area telling me that, um, oh, I need help. And then later they say, oh, your video helped me fix it myself. So um, I guess I don't have to pay anything now and it makes me sad because it, it makes me feel like I'm helping so many people but at the same time nobody wants to help me out so 
Um, please keep that in mind. Um, even if it's just like a few cents or a dollar, every little bit helps and makes it easier for me to make a living doing this. <clears throat> and also makes me not feel as bad that I'm doing this and, <clears throat> and not making a living because of it. So anyways, let's slide this in. All right, get this cover back on. Um, you can kind of push this to clip everything back into place and then just get those screws in and we should be good to go. All right, we will power this on just because um, a lot of people are like, well, we didn't see it if it turns on or not. So hopefully it turns on still. Um, but yeah, all right, get this screw in. Okay, get this screw in. All right. And usually whether my computer or my, this is my, these are all my customers' computers. I don't have any, I might have like one video of a computer I used before or two at most, but uh, all these videos are customer computers. So keep that in mind. I don't keep their computers. So if you have any questions that require their computer, I won't have it at the time. Um, so yeah, anyways, <clears throat> let's go ahead and open this up. Also, if I didn't already mention, I have a, another channel where I do reviews and stuff. It's right now I'm putting them on this channel as well, but eventually I'm gonna break them off and put them on that channel only. So keep that in mind because people that come here for computer repairs were like saying, why is it all mixed in? And they're getting too many notifications of random stuff that they don't really care to watch. So that's why I'm making a second one. All right, and actually it already turned itself on. The Alienware logo came on. But again, because the BIOS was most likely reset, it restarted itself. So I don't know. We'll see if it turns itself back on or if I need to push the power button. It was, oh, the keyboard is lighting up all rainbowy. You can see those colors. So there we go. Alienware, it's restarting again. So hopefully after it restarts a couple times, it will just start up. <clears throat> um, because if it's something else, I'm not too sure what else to check. So keyboard's lighting up rainbow again and huh it just keeps restarting that's kind of worrying me because um they were saying like it was getting stuck so i'm starting to think it might be that video chip issue let's see it's coming on again yeah i don't know what's going on let me try plugging the power in <clears throat> i mean it does keep turning itself back on so I don't know unless something is caught on the power button it doesn't feel like it it's clicking normally yeah I don't know what's going on it's like turning itself on and off and on and off and it's not staying on usually if it's a BIOS thing it should have stopped by now it wouldn't start up that many times it's, it's like yeah it's weird okay let's plug in the power cable and see if there's any difference there. Maybe once it turns on again, I'm gonna just press the power button. Let's try pressing F2 to see if it goes to the BIOS or something. <clears throat> it was on earlier because I was able to go to the BIOS, so. Hmm. It's not turning itself on again. Let's turn it on manually. I'll press F2. Oh no, it's like turning itself on and off. What is going on here? I'll hold the power button. I might have to check the power button cable. Maybe something's going weird with that. Because <clears throat> it's weird that it turned itself on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Let's go ahead and unplug this and take it back apart and see if there's anything weird going on. We'll pull this out and let's get the bottom cover back off. I'm getting a little worried here. That's really strange what it's doing. Okay. Let's try removing the battery. Give me a second, I'm getting a call, I'll be back. All right, I'm back, let's open this thing up and see what's going on, hopefully, I don't know. That's very strange. I'm worried it, it really is that GPU issue that I was thinking. Um, 
And if that's the case, we're not going to be able to do anything about that. But, uh, this is all connected. The only thing I can check is the power button switch here. So we'll pull that out. And now the power button shouldn't do anything. It's still turning itself on. What in the world? And turning itself off. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. That's really strange. Um, it could possibly be something weird with this board. So I guess let's unplug this and I'm going to just redo the whole thing. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um, if it did, again, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others. And yeah, I'm going to figure this thing out and then we'll see. But most likely it's this. I'll probably mention it in the comments because I'm just going to upload the video as is now. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Let me drop this spike. All right, got it working. It did pop up an error about real-time clock error. I'm not too sure what happened, but I readjusted the power button board. Um, and then I also brushed the entire motherboard to clean off any dust that might have been making some kind of short somewhere. And now it's booting. So, yep, there you go. You can see date and time will need to be readjusted. But other than that, good to go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. All right, so this is the board that I readjusted. I took the whole thing out, then readjusted it. It does have, like, the little pins that stick up. And I tried to align it so that it did. it was, like, centered in the little circles. Um, and yeah, it looks like it's good now. So I'm going to put the battery back in. Hopefully it's not the battery that was causing it because I left the battery out. I'm going to put the battery back in and then we'll test it again. Oh, one other thing I noticed, there's an arrow here. So probably the customer lost a screw because I didn't take a screw out from there. And yeah, so most likely there was also a screw there. All right, that's pretty much it. We're just going to put the bottom cover back on and test it. All right, I'll see you guys when I turn it back on. All right, got our, all the screws back in. Let's flip it over. And I guess, uh, let's try it without the plug first. Okay, and keyboard's lighting up. It's gonna flash. Usually it will, because the battery was off and it was unplugged, it should be resetting the BIOS. So you can see nothing's happening right now. Um, you see the keyboard's flashing again. There's the Alienware. It should probably do it one more time. Oh, there you go. Real-time clock error. Okay, and then we'll continue. Make sure to set the date and time back properly. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, and my guess is it was that power button board. Maybe something was pressing wrong or shorted up to where it thought the 